the Moodle database activity. The database activity allows teachers and or students to build a database or a collection of records about any conceivable topic. This can include images, files, URLs, or web links, numbers, and text. Teachers can allow comments on entries. Teachers can also approve or disapprove entries. If set, entries can be rated by other students for peer evaluation. These ratings can be aggregated to form a final grade. This final grade will be recorded in the Moodle gradebook. Moodle databases are commonly used for the following. A collaborative collection of web links, books, reviews, and journal references. It can also be used for a shared display of student-created photos, posters, websites, poems, and interactively for peer comment and review. To set up a database in its simplest form, the teacher would need to configure the settings, add fields to the database, save the templates, and if necessary, assign permissions. To add the database activity to your course, log into your course and click Turn Editing On. Click Add an Activity or Resource and select Database. Click Add. Enter a name for your database. The items in red are required. Enter a description for your database. To display the description on the course page, click here. Next we have our Entries options. Approval required. If set to yes, the teacher must approve the entry before it's made available to the other students. Allow comments on entries, yes or no. This setting allows the students to enter comments on the entries provided by their peers. Entries required for completion will set at one. The student must enter at least one entry. Entries required before viewing. This is the number of entries a student is required to submit before they can view entries from other students. Let's set this at 1. The maximum number of entries option is the maximum number of entries a student is allowed to submit for this activity. And we'll set this at 1. The duration for the database can be set under the availability option. You can also configure the database to be read-only. With this option, students can review entries. They cannot submit entries. In the grade option, if your gradebook has been configured, you can send the final grade to a certain category. In this instance, we'll send it to field studies. Once the database activity is saved, we'll be able to check the roles that are allowed to rate the entries in the permissions area of the administration block. The aggregate type defines how ratings are combined to form the final grade in the gradebook. We have average of ratings, which is the mean of all ratings, count of ratings, which is where the number of rated items become the final grade. The total cannot exceed the maximum grade for the activity. With the maximum, the highest rating becomes the final grade. With the minimum, the smallest rating becomes the final grade. And with the sum, all ratings are added together. Again, the total cannot exceed the maximum grade for the activity. If no ratings is selected, then the activity will not appear in the gradebook. We'll use average of ratings, and we'll use a scale of 100. Click Save and Display. In the next window, we'll define the fields for the database. Field options are checkbox, date, file, latitude, longitude, menu, multi-menu, number, picture, poodle recording, radio button, text area, text input, and URL. The first field will be a picture. The next fields control the size of the image as it's displayed on the page in single view and in list view. Let's set it at 750 by 450 for both views. 
single and list. Maximum size 10 megabytes. Click Add. The next field will be the date. The next field will be a text area. And that's all we need for this simple database. Click on Templates. This area determines the views for your database. Students can view a single entry in a database or they can view a list of entries. Templates determine how the single view and the list view will be displayed to students. Starting with single view, to keep the default template, simply click Save Template. Click List Template. The list template has a header and a footer area. In the header, we'll have Cuisine from Granada. And in the footer, we'll enter Thanks for Browsing. Over to the left, we can see our available tags. Tags are placeholders in the template, which will be replaced by data or other items, such as an edit icon when entries are edited or viewed. The first three tags are the fields that we created, the cuisine image, the date taken, and the where was this image taken field. Other actions that can be added to your template are the edit, delete, approve, undo approval, export, more, a more URL, and a bulk delete. For this database, we'll add a couple of other tags. Time added, click here. And we'll also add the user. Click Save Template. At this point, we've saved the list template and the single template the search template we'll save that as well we'll just keep the defaults and the add template we'll save that as well click add entry to display the add entry page let's click search and here's our search page view single and view list. Let's log in as a student to view what the student sees. I'm logged in as a test student and the view is a little different. The student has a view list, view single, a search, and add entry. To add an entry, click add entry. To add an image, I'll drag it from my desktop. Alternative text, Spanish ham. date taken, enter where the image was taken, click save and view. We set the size for the image in list view and single view, therefore the image cannot be displayed any larger than 750 by 450. View list, And here are the additional placeholders that we added. This photo was entered on Tuesday, April 19th by the test user. Let's log in as a student reviewer and not the student that actually submitted the photo. I'm logged in as another test student. This student must add one entry before he's able to view the other student's entry. Click Add Entry.
enter your alternative text. Save. And there's the student's entry. View list. Okay, let's log back in as a teacher and approve these entries. Log back in as a teacher. The approval button is this little check mark here. So I'm going to approve this photo. And I'm going to also approve this photo. Entry approved. The teacher also has the right to edit, see more photos, delete the photo, undo the approval, and export the photo to a portfolio. Back in as a student, this is list view. And if we were to click single view, We could add a comment. I'm logged back in with full permissions. The last thing I'll go over in this tutorial is the permissions for rating the entries in the database. Once logged into the database, click in the administration block and click permissions. Choose the role of student. and set rate entries to allow. There are a number of other permissions that you can set for the student, but for now we'll only set the permission to allow the student to rate the entries. Click Save. Let's go back to Edit Settings. And under the Ratings options, we can see the roles that have the ability to rate the entries. And here's Student, which we just added. We'll also select average of ratings and a scale of 100. If you wanted to restrict the ratings to within a certain date range, click here. We have no date restrictions for this database. And click Save and Return to Course. Let's log back in as a student. And now the student has the ability to rate the entries. Go to the next photo or the next entry. And because the test student actually submitted this photo, there is no option to rate. Let's log back in as a teacher. Go back to the course. And check the grades. And we can see the grade or rating that has been transferred to the Moodle gradebook. And that concludes the Moodle database tutorial. Thanks for watching.